Welcome to Back 40 Predators. Once again, I'm your host, Rory Rock. This week we're heading up to my bear camp in the western side of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We're going to walk you through my camp, show you what it's all about, and explain to you a little bit about what we got going on up there. So stay tuned because our show starts right now. Predators live from the tree. That's one down. First night, baby. Oh, Daddy, that's a good one for Jersey. So, this one here, bro. This way and go down. Bye. Good dog. I think we're a pretty good shot. So I actually own two different companies. I own Northern Michigan Outfitters and I own Back 40 Predators. Now Northern Michigan Outfitters is what kind of got this all started. It started up at my bear camp which is on the western side of the UP in a little town called Ontonagon. And this week we are headed up there to get our camp opened up, get everything ready for my hunters this fall, and I want to show you guys a little bit about our camp. So we're headed out in the truck, we're taking the long hike, the long drive, it's about nine hours, and we will see you up there. up in Ontonagon we unload the trailers we get the four-wheelers off we load them up with our gear and we trek back on our trail now our trail is not a nice little dirt road where you could walk down drive down a little go-kart whatever our trail is full of mud and it is about two miles long and it beats the crap out of our machines every year but we like it like that we like the the fact that nobody else can get back in there you need a machine you got to know where it's at and we like being away from everybody and this trail is horrendous. I can't emphasize that enough. Every year we work on it, every year it gets worse. It's just, it's like a lose-lose a situation. this year and we're getting things ready so lots to be done we're working on the trails which are a muddy mess the bugs are now out we got these little black flies flying everywhere um, but it's beautiful you know you can't beat it um, as you see this sign behind me that's my camp name here it's it's 10 for camp 1042 and I'm a police officer so in the police world for those of you that are cops you know what 1042 stands for it means off-duty so that's what I am when I come up here. I'm off duty. This is just where I get away and relax. So.
This segment was brought to you by Moxie Archery, where accuracy begins with craftsmanship. At Moxie Archery, accuracy begins with craftsmanship. To have Moxie is to have backbone, power, precision, to be bold and fearless, face difficulties with courage. You wait so long just to have that feeling, but it happens so fast. Moxie Archery, where accuracy begins with craftsmanship. My name is Troy Claver, owner and founder of Scent Capture. As a lifelong hunter and outdoorsman, many of my best memories were with my family and friends in the great outdoors. So I took that passion and combined it with my 15 years experience in the liquids business to give you a product that could help you get closer to game and memories that last a lifetime. When you think of scent elimination, think Scent Capture. Get closer. So everybody always asks when they're looking at coming up hunting, what are your accommodations like? Well, I want to give you guys a little bit of a tour of my camp, show you exactly what we got going on, and show everybody that it's actually a pretty nice place out in the middle of nowhere. Alright guys, I'm going to take you into the bathroom here at Camp 1042. I just want to kind of show you guys this is the comfort level of this place. This is for not only males, but it's also for females too, so follow me in here. Not that you've never seen a bathroom before, but... This camp is out in the middle of the woods, okay? We have a walk-in tiled shower here, hot water. We also have indoor facilities, and obviously the, the vanity here. So um, it's very comfortable for, for everybody. Um, you, don't, you don't have to spend a week in the woods and um, feel like you're dirty and stuff. So. so guys, here we are. This is another little uh, room that I've built in the camp here. This is kind of the utility room here, all right? Basically what we do here, we keep we store some of our tools, but all those, also this is where the plumbing comes in. We've got it wired up to a box, and then this is an instant hot water heater that's run off of propane. That's what causes you to have hot water over there in the, in the nice walk-in tiled shower. All the water is filtered, which is collected from the, the, the rainwater off of the roof. We fill up two large tanks, which I'll show you guys here in a few minutes, but um, a lot of thought has went into this place. It's not just a fly-by-night deal. This is something that I live in for a month out of the year straight, so it's got to be comfortable. So over here is the messy bedroom, all right? And when, when my hunters come, this is all nice and tidy, but we have been staying here for a couple days, guys, and this is just where I've been sleeping. we got a nice tongue and groove uh, pine uh, siding all over the walls and the ceilings. Um, you'll notice this nice log belly. It's nice. It's queen size. It's a little bit bigger. Um, I built this myself. Um, anything you see built out of logs, I've done myself. Guys, I'm no log furniture builder, but I like to dabble and stuff. I built this stuff, I used a hammer and a chisel. So I got a lot of time, sweat, and, and tears and blood going into this stuff. Um, but it's comfortable, it's solid, and uh, like I said, um, I kind of put, I generally put my, uh, my couples in here usually. If I get a, a male and a female coming up, they want a little of their own privacy. Um, this is where I generally put them, so. 
you know, kitchen. All right. Now, obviously, like I said, we've been staying here a couple days. Kitchen's messy. This is something I clean up every morning, every night. It's an ongoing process, just like if you're at home. But we've got nice cabinetry and uh, hot water to clean the dishes. This is where I make all the food, if not here, out on the grill. Um, we've got a full-size refrigerator, run it off the generator. Um, we've got a washing machine right here next to this. And then uh, if you look down here, um, this is our source of heat. Okay, this is what we use. We, we burn wood right off the land here. Um, it's clean, it burns hot, it burns fast. It's a lot of popular, a lot of um, aspen type trees. Um, but it provides nice, hot, heavy heat. Um, over here, guys, we got the, uh, the kitchen table. And once again, a little messy, but uh, like I said, we've been here a couple days, guys. So, um, we've, and we've been working our butts off. Um, but this is where everybody dines. Um, this is where we sit down, we break bread. So I'm staying in the living room, okay? We got not only some nice furniture in here, but you'll notice our smart TV. We just picked this thing up. We had a plasma before. It went down on us, but now we went to the smart TV. I have no idea what makes this TV smart, but it does. So anyway, um, I'm going to turn the light on. We've got some stuff hanging on the wall. It's a relatively new camp. We built this probably three, four years ago. Kind of an ongoing process. I'm slowly bringing stuff up here. We've got some, some gear on the wall, but I want to focus on this bear up here, okay? This bear was taken right off this land. This is a Michigan bear here in Noggin, Michigan. It's a Boone and Crockett bear. It was 410 pounds dressed out and scored 23 16. I took this probably three quarters of a mile from here and I got it to my taxidermist over at Driftwood Taxidermy, and last year he came up to bear hunt with us, and uh, uh, he brought the bear back with him, and it spread back right where it belongs here, where it was taken. So we've got some decent bears up here, guys. Uh, you know they're not all that big, but um, there's some big ones out here. All right, guys, I'm on the, uh, the stairway here, going up to the loft and up to the upstairs bedroom. This is where my hunters stay for the most part. Uh, we've got bunks up here with mattresses and, and whatnot, but uh, this is where everybody sleeps. So I'll have you follow me up and uh, I'll show you what we got going on up here. Go ahead and do it. So we're in the upstairs now, guys, and uh, obviously, as you can see, it's a mess just like everywhere else. Um, we clean it all up. I don't want to reiterate that. Um, we usually keep it very tidy, but we've been super, super busy here doing trails and, and opening up camp here. So we're living here this weekend, uh, but this is the upstairs. We comfortably sleep eight to ten people up here, no problem. This is just a little extra separate bedroom. Um, like I said, we've got bunks here with mattresses. Um, I have everybody bring their own bedding, blankets, and uh, mat, uh, sheets, pillows type stuff. And uh, this is where we sleep. Very comfortable, all beautiful tongue and groove siding that we put up in here, and um, everybody en enjoys it. But anyway, here's more of some of the furniture I built, some of these Adirondack chairs. Um, and I tell you what, we spent a lot of time on this grill right here. Um, a lot of the stuff you see up at camp here is just stuff that we picked up, not if not free, but very cheap. This this grill here, somebody threw that out. It was sitting alongside the road. I stopped and said, hey, are you getting rid of that grill? Sure enough, they said, yeah, you can have it. And I've had it up here two years, the thing works great. And let me tell you, it's made a lot of miles happy over the time. So um, if you come up here bear hunting sometime, um, <laughs> you'll be eating food off that grill, I guarantee you. So I want to show you something real cool now, guys. We're going to head down to the garage, all right? This is something uh, that we just, uh, well, it was actually the first building built up here prior to even having this camp. But uh, we got up here this spring a couple days ago. We had a little surprise coming down here at the garage, so follow me. All right, so guys, this is the original Camp 1042 right here, okay? Um, when I purchased this land several years ago, I came up here and I threw this this, this little uh, shed type garage up. And, uh, you know, it's this rock camp. We've obviously changed the name over the years. But this is, this is where it all started. Um, I came here this a couple days ago and I always have a surprise every year I come, okay? These bears, I, I store some stuff in here, and I probably shouldn't. I had some bear magnet in here, and a little bit, a little bit of vanilla, 
and I came here and as you see these front doors on here they swing open and close well so are the back doors and as you can see the back doors are laying on the ground back there so I had a bear get in here guys and normally people might freak out about that but I am a bear hunter and when I have bears in the area I actually enjoy this so um, there's a nice big old paw print in here he's made a, a giant mess in here I've got to clean this up before we take off but uh, yeah he got inside here and, and uh, made himself at home I'm not sure if he slept in here or, or what what his plan was but uh, he made a mess I can tell you that because this was nice and tidy when I left it um, these are my water tanks okay and what happens they're not even hooked up to the roof right now but I got a gutter system hanging here all the rain that comes off that roof it's funneled into that thing right there and it goes right directly into this tank which honestly that tank's full of water and let me tell you you get a good rainstorm you get dang near 500 gallons of water in a very short amount of time so we pump that in that's what you're going to wash your dishes with that's what you're going to take your showers with that's what you're going to flush your toilets with and it works out pretty dang well so guys that's my camp in a nutshell um i'll take you out sometime on a ride on the four-wheeler uh, but let me tell you it's a bumpy ride it's a mess um if you guys are interested in coming up here for bear hunting get a hold of me northern michigan outfitters um you can go to www.northernmichiganoutfitters.com you can look us up on facebook we have 65 different pages uh, just message one of the pages and i guarantee you we will get in contact with you we would love to have you up here and uh and have you enjoy this with us so you guys thanks for stopping by and checking out our camp This segment was brought to you by Moxie Archery, where accuracy begins with craftsmanship. It packs a punch hunters rely on. Crafted with a short, versatile 30 and 5 8 axle to axle and fast, smooth MXB cams, your prey stands no chance. Moxie Archery, where accuracy begins with craftsmanship. Every year I get all sorts of different people that come up to hunt bear at my camp. A couple years ago, I had the privilege of bringing up a good friend of mine, Stacy Skaggs from In the Crosshairs Hunting. 
We had a great week, a great time, and let's check out how this panned out for Stacy. I was up in the Upper Peninsula, the very far western side, at the base of the Porcupine Mountains with Roy Rout of Northern Michigan Outfitters, and that's where we're going to start the show today. He invited me up there this year if I drew a tag for Berglund, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as the time came, I put in and I drew my tag. Couldn't wait to get up there. September 15th, Rory had the baits going, and I was pumped to get on the stand for the very first night. Well, hey guys, here we are. It is our first night in the UP of Michigan, the Upper Peninsula. We're in the Berglund area. I have drawn the second tag of the second season, and it starts today, the September 15th. We're up here with uh, Rory Rout of Northern Michigan Outfitters. We went out this morning, we baited. This bait was pounded. Got pictures from last night of a littler bear. Uh, we're hoping that it's kind of like the deer thing when you put out a little bit of bait for deer. One deer comes in, then two deer, then four deer, then 10 deer. So we're hoping maybe that little bear draws in a bigger bear tonight. The weather has finally started to cooperate. It's nice and sunny, high 60s. That cold front has moved out of here. The bait's kind of slowed down, he said, during that cold front. But hopefully it's Monday. It's supposed to be nice all week. We can get some bears coming in. So super excited. Again, I got to say thanks to Roy Rout of Northern Michigan Outfitters for inviting me up here. It's, we're hoping it's going to be a good week. So I'm all strapped in. The bait's at 24 yards, and we're hoping for a big black bear now. So let's see what happens. I had just turned the camera off, lost camera light, and I looked down and here come the bear. Now I could see the bear perfect, and as a matter of fact, I was at full draw, but I could not get this bear on camera. So I figured, hey, you know what, it's the first night of the hunt, I've got all week, this bear's going to come back, I'm not going to blow it. So I let down, hung my bow, watched the bear until full dark got out of there and came back the second day to rebate it with Roy. What? Simple as that, we're rebated. We're rebated. Now let me get up from here. Now day another night, thing that Roy The second had. night of the hunt. I was pretty confident I was gonna get a shot at this bear. So here it is, it's about quarter to seven and I look to my right and I catch black coming through the trees. Sure enough, here comes the bear. Now this is a great northern Michigan bear, not a monster Boone and Crockett, but it's a 250 pound bear. And the average bear from Michigan is about 140 to 150 pounds, that's the average bear. So this is a good bear, and I'm going to take this bear if this bear will give me a shot. Now I think this bear knew I was in the tree, because when he came in, he came in and faced directly at me. And he would not turn. He just stood there straight on eating the bait. And yeah, he kind of turned once in a while to, he would turn to leave to, with a big chunk of cookie dough or he'd walk over to the bear sucker. But when you're archery hunting, you can't just force the shot. And it, I, 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 I take that back. When you're hunting with a gun or a muzzle loader or a bow, you, you can't just force the shot. You have to be very selective. You have to wait for the right shot. With an archery equipment, it's even more, it's more imperative that you wait for that bear, the deer, to be broadside, quartered away. You know, if I'd had a rifle, I could have shot him in the neck. There was some times where I could have shot. But with a bow, I couldn't shoot. And this bear stood there for 25 minutes eating the bait. Never gave me a shot. So I figured, okay, you know what? Tomorrow night, I'm going to hang the bow up and I'm bringing the fire stick. That way, if you do come in again, I'm going to put you down. Well, unfortunately, when the bear left and he walked straight to my left, I knew right where he was headed. He was headed to John, who was in the honey hole. Now, John, he forced the issue. He didn't give the bear enough time to get in the right position. He saw the bear. He got excited. He puts crosshairs on black, and he shot. We tracked it for almost two days and we never did find that bear. It was a great bear. And it just, it's unfortunate that it happened that way. But, you know what? Lesson learned to John. Be patient. You know, he said, Well, I didn't think the bear was going to come to the bait. Well, the bear wasn't there to climb up in the tree and have a conversation with you. The bear was there to hit the bait. You, you have to wait him out. You have to be patient. That bear would have came to the bait. 
So after that, unfortunately, the, it got cold and the baits just shut off. We just, we were not having any success. I'm not upset, I'm not angry. It was a great hunt, I seen a good bear, but you know what, when you're hunting with a bow, you have to be very, you know, your shot has to be perfect. And I wasn't gonna force the issue, and it just it turned out that way. And I know Rory's got the bears, because check this out, this bear was shot the week before I got to camp. Got a great camp out there. There's no dog runners. He's about two and a half miles back in the woods on a four wheeler, and it's a pretty hairy ride. It's you're going through some stuff that you're not getting a truck down. So dog runners cannot access where he's at, which is a good thing. Lots of bears. He's got tons of bears up there, and I cannot wait to get my tag for 2015. And I'm headed back up there to try to get me a bear. And that's another great thing about Rory's camp. You can hunt his camp every year. The first season, you're gonna have to have a couple points. But the second season and the third season, for sure, you can draw with no points. So as soon as it comes time, I'm gonna be putting in for Berglund, drawing me a tag, headed back up to the Porcupine Mountains with Rory, and getting me a bear. This segment was brought to you by Moxie Archery, where accuracy begins with craftsmanship. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of Back 40 Predators. Once again, catch us next week, Monday night, 8 p.m., for a brand new episode. We'll see you then.